Oh my gosh, it's so nice to meet you. Thanks for taking the time to chat with me. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I am totally obsessed with the show. I've told literally like everyone in my life, you have to watch Sullivan's Crossing. It's so good. (laughs) That's so sweet. To kind of start off, I'd love to talk about just the fact that it has so many elements that are really appealing right now. And that so many things that feel like that old school goodness that we've been missing from television. Specifically, I have not seen a full theme song in a really long time, which is something I talk about a lot. So I'd love to hear what you think is like the show's strengths, kind of just about that aspect of it. Yeah, no, I love that. I haven't thought about that of of like a full theme song. That's so fair. Because now every time when I read this script and it's like the first bit and then it says like opening credits, the song starts playing in my head. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it, it's totally what, you, what you're saying of, um, yeah, it has so many elements that is that, that classic feel good. Um, I don't know, you put on to in in like have a lovely evening kind of thing and and feel cozy at home like thinking of um you know those old 90s like romantic movies and stuff or like even Aaron Brockovich or like Notting Hill or something like that like there is there is just such um you know you love to watch people fall in love but also I think one of the strengths of the show too is the community aspect of it and how there's so many people coming together um And I think that that's what the world is so big and scary right now too. And you kind of just want to find your people and feel supported and held. So it's nice to see Mm -hmm. that on TV. The relationships in the show are absolutely, it's beating heart. And I am just so obsessed with like all the different pairings and the friend groups. Um, And I'd love to hear kind of specifically with Cal and Sully kind of cultivating those relationships, because I think it's really a testament to y'all that the fact that you're getting closer to Cal, but then also you're not quite getting closer to Sully have like equal impact. And I would love to hear about that from your perspective, kind of internally. Yeah, I mean, the thing that's kind of helpful for both of those relationships are that like Cal is brand new to Maggie and they both have their walls up, but they're also kind of trying to get to know each other. So because Chad and I are meeting for the first time when we filmed this, it's like, as we're getting to know each other and as we're getting more comfortable with each other, it's like, also it's the same thing that's happening with our characters, Mm -hmm. like on a different plane. But um, I think that brings like an authenticity to it because it's just what's really happening. And then I think kind of same thing with Sully and Maggie. I mean, they have ideas of who they were and how they, and like what their relationship was and maybe Mm. could have been, but there's so much time in between there. So it really is relearning a person and like Mm -hmm. trying to figure out if this version in your head is the same one that matches up in real life kind of thing. I think both relationships have such an impact because, well, they're, they're so different, but they can be so huge. They're both huge, really. I mean, maybe not Cal yet, but like, you know, equal impact on screen kind of thing. The show isn't quite as like fast paced as some other series that I've seen, which I really am loving. And it feels like there's a ton of creative space to breathe. Do you guys kind of How do you approach like improv or keeping directly to the script? Do things change as you get to like a particular scene? Yeah, we do have like rewrites that are coming through as we're filming. So it definitely keeps us on our toes a little bit too. And, and it's probably helpful in that way as well too. So you're, you're ready to move and shift depending on what's changing. We don't do a lot of like improv, but our showrunner Roma Roth is super collaborative with like, if we have notes ahead of time or thoughts or things that maybe are feeling a little funny, or we have an idea that could maybe work differently. Um, she's been really open to that. So it's been really collaborative in that way. And they aren't like sticklers to like, you have to say the, and not it, you know, like yeah. <laughs> perfect in that. So that's been, been really great. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything that would surprise Sullivan's Crossing fans about the show um everything takes forever (laughs) yeah like a scene takes forever to do um it's so funny to bring like like I've tried to bring my my family to set when I can and each of them individually they're like 
this is so much more like slower, <laughs> takes forever. And like, there's so many, so many moving parts to it all. We did do a, a funny little Halloween prank earlier this week that I think will be Someone will be posting at some point. So I don't want to spoil that, but we did do a good thing with like all of the crew too, which is really fun. Oh my gosh. I can imagine if you're just kind of, if you have the time to sit around, you're like, what should we do? Let's, <laughs> let's figure out what kind of prank to do. That sounds so fun. Also talking about surprises in a sense. Um, so episode four just debuted in the States and I was totally not expecting like Cal to be a lawyer for some reason that really shook me to my core (laughs) do you kind of hold off on on some of the more plot twists to kind of have like a closer reaction or do you kind of approach just reading the scripts as they come because we don't shoot them in order also like when we're oh yeah we'll generally for this show anyways we film two episodes at the same time so we'll be filming a scene from episode three and then we'll be the next scene of that day will be an episode from like the end of episode four so you kind of have to know everything that's going yeah (laughs) otherwise that would be you know an interesting way to go about it for sure to keep that super fresh yeah wait is that hard to like keep track do you like how do you kind of keep track of like what is happening and and everything it's easier so we're filming season two right now which is really exciting um so it's this year it's been more linear but our Mm -hmm. first year we filmed episode one and six at the same time and then we did two and five and then three and four and that was tricky because there's so much to yeah when you're going back and forth so it's just about like I do like a million notes and like everything that's going on. So I can like quickly track back on like, okay, what's happened right before this? Where am I coming from? Do I know that bit yet? Or do I, is that new information to me kind of thing? So I definitely have to have kind of like a bit of a system of um, where you're at. Yeah. Do you also keep like character journal or a character playlist or anything to kind of help with your preparation in that way? Yeah, first season I did have a Maggie playlist. I haven't done it so much for this season, but I've definitely been thinking about it and wanting to like keep more of an ear out for that. So I did that. And then I also do have a little journal that I go through for like every and I'll do the what else could be going on in her mind or thinking about or wanting to say. That's not necessarily the lines that I have to say kind of thing. Mm, I find yeah. that, that helps a lot. I also would love to talk about kind of Nova Scotia in general, because mm-hmm. I've never been to Canada. I've always wanted to go. So if, if someone had never been to Nova Scotia before, do you have any recommendations? Oh my God. I love this city. Take a walk along the waterfront. It's so beautiful on a perfect day. There's a cute little bar right at the end of a couple of the piers, sit out, watch the sun go down. There's lovely little cruises where they take you all around, see all the beautiful homes on the water. There's so many hikes around here, good chunk of bars. I mean, it's like such a, such a lovely city. And the nice thing about it too, is like, it's a city. And then Mm -hmm. like a little bit of time out, you can be out on a trail somewhere in a small community. Like there's just like so much, so many different bits and pieces you can pick from. So going kind of back to earlier, we were talking about how the show has all of those good comfort show feelings. It also balances kind of the more intense scenes really well. What is it like working on both of those things, the the cozy scenes, and then all of a sudden shifting to like, you're trying to find this girl who's been kidnapped and <laughs> there's like blood and like all this stuff that has to be really exciting to film. Yeah. Oh my God, Jess, you wait as the season goes too. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Um, it's really fun because it keeps it really interesting and, mm. and exciting for us too. Like getting to work with those different elements. It's like, ooh, today's kidnapping day. <laughs> like, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> you know, we do fun things. So that's been really fun. And then it does always feel like the scenes where it's more of just um, I feel like the heart of the show is just those relationships between characters where they're just getting to talk and communicate and just like yeah have those real like open heart moments I feel like that is the center of the show so every time we get to come back to that it kind of feels like a coming home and then we get to explore and then we get to come home kind of thing yeah no that totally makes sense you also do so many fun like 
activities in the show, like kayaking and karaoke? Did you have any skills that you had to learn or brush up on before either season one or season two? Season two, I did have to watch um, some videos of some medical things that were fun. Mm. Um, (laughs) Interesting. (laughs) Yeah. It was great. I was like, wow. Wow. Not on a Sunday night, but great. (laughs) I mean, not so far where I've had to like go take lessons and and that. Oh, you know what? I had to play chess. I have to play chess in season two. And I've never really, I feel like I've, I've tried to learn chess like three times. And I have a general idea now, like I know which points move where, but like yeah. that, I downloaded an app and I tried. <laughs> Wait, do you have any favorite games besides chess? I really like crib. Oh, I don't even know what that is. Oh, it's just like a, a, a board with pegs and it's like a card game. Yeah, it's great. It's like a good, like ca- cozy cabin game. I don't know. It's super chill. <laughs> Excellent. I love that. Going into season two, obviously not spoiling anything, but has anything surprised you about Maggie or like, did you learn any new information or um, anything like that as you went into season two? And will we get to see Fred make an appearance in the show? Oh my God. He's also, I don't think you can see him that black (gasps) right there. It's just, (laughs) I hope he's not in there yet, but we're working, we're working at it. I was like, um, Phoebe could have a dog. She'd absolutely have a lovely little purse dog. I don't know that he's, he's kind of a purse dog. He could be, yeah. he could be a purse dog. Yeah. He's not yet made an appearance, but working on it. And anything surprising about Maggie? Yeah. I mean, I got, we get to learn a bit more about um her and Phoebe leaving the crossing and kind of more of why and how that happened and, and digging into that a little bit. Um, So that was good to find out. Okay, so some kind of rapid fire esque questions you can answer as short or as long as you like. Uh, What are you reading right now? Oh, um, Rouge. I Mona. I might be in it. Awad. That might be wrong. I got it from Amalia, who plays Lola. She read it, so we're like switching out. (laughs) Oh my gosh, it's like a book club. (laughs) Right here, this one. Oh, love. I'll add it to my list. Great. What song do you have on repeat right now? Oh, the whole Olivia Dean Messy album. I am absolutely obsessed. Excellent. And what is your go-to coffee or tea order? An oat milk misto with probably too much sugar. I know sometimes I drink my favorite drink and I'm like, this cannot be, this this has too much sugar. (laughs) Yeah. If I'm ever with anybody while I'm getting my coffee ready, I'm like, turn around. Don't look at me. (laughs) It's like pour my sugar. (laughs) What is your mantra or a piece of advice that has impacted the way you live? I do not chase. I attract what's meant for me. will find me something along those lines. And it's that kind of, yeah, if not like being too desperate or pushing too hard, whatever's meant to be, will will come for you kind of thing. And what is your go-to dish to make when hosting? Either I did a little barbecue before I left to come out here. um, And we did grilled peaches on the barbecue with a little brown sugar and butter very good or just like classic easy would just be those little like caprese skewers with um cheat like bocconcini and tomato and basil and balsamic drizzle that sounds so good (laughs) i love that (laughs) actually kind of wrapping up i would love to hear like why you love maggie and kind of just getting to know her on a more intimate level the longer you go um yeah i would just love to hear about that from your perspective of being so close to her i love how big her heart is no matter how guarded she is and like how much she wants to be loved and wants to love and is having she just has a hard time of letting that happen um so I think she's a really caring and generous person who just has a lot of past trauma and walls um and I I love getting to work on her because so much of what comes up in her life I mean innately you're going to be thinking about your character a lot so it makes you think about your own and how if these things were to happen to you how you would feel about it or different things that that um yeah are 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 happening it's like how how would I feel how do I feel about that in my own life kind of thing so in learning about her I've been learning about myself a lot too which has been really really yeah 
Thank you so much. Congratulations for real on this show. It is, Thank you. It is literally, it's like a hug. It really uh, is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been really lovely chatting with you. Yes. I hope we get to chat again. Yeah, we do. Have a good weekend. Thank you. You as well. Bye. Okay. Bye.